It's my great pleasure uh, to introduce Daniel Murashiges. She has done her undergrad degree at the University of Virginia and has joined David James' lab in September last year. Daniel, we're looking forward to your talk. Hello, good morning everyone. Um, it's been a great pleasure to be at the Garvin Institute over the past year. Um, this was made possible by a generous fellowship from the Whitaker International Program, which um, supports biomedical research over in the United States. And um, I'm about to go back to the U.S. and, um, you know, look at some graduate schools for, for eventually getting my Ph.D. Um, so, over the past uh, year, I've been working on a project studying the mammalian target of rapamycin, complex one. Um, this is a very clinically interesting target for um, intracellular signaling because it's involved in many different pathways that regulate cell growth and, and division. And so, it's been implicated in um, diseases ranging from insulin resistance to cancer to Alzheimer's disease. And um, what I'm primarily interested in is um, how mTOR complex one regulation is, um, can be uh, disrupted in diseases that involve metabolic signaling. So uh, the primary signaling pathways that I've been focusing on are the insulin signaling pathway and also the amino acid signaling pathway, so how cells sense when there's um, immediate nutrient availability and also systemic nutrient availability. And actually these, these two things happen through um, very different mechanisms. There's a uh, well-established pathway by which mTOR senses um, insulin signaling, and this happens um, by AKT, which uh, represses the, the repressors and um, activates mTOR, mTORC1. And mTORC1 is thought to be um, localized to the lysosome when there's amino acid availability. And at the lysosome, there is REB, which is the activator of mTOR. And this um, lysosomal localization happens um, because of the RAG GTPases. And this pathway has only been um, identified in the past uh, four years. And there's a lot of new information coming out about how mTOR senses when there's amino acids available. So I've been studying um, the RAG GTPases, which are at the bottom of the slide. And um, they form a heterodimer. And um, when there's amino acids available, RAG A, uh, RAG A or B um, is GTP loaded and RAG C or D is GDP loaded. And so all of this results in um, the upregulation of anabolic pathways and the, and the downregulation of catabolic pathways. So um, recently, a uh, former PhD student in our lab, Sean Humphrey, um, just finished a very large phospho screen, phosphoproteomic screen, of uh, insulin regulated phosphorylation events. And one of the proteins that came out of this screen was RAG C. This was particularly interesting to us because it showed that RAG C was not only involved in the amino acid signaling pathway, but it's also involved in the insulin signaling pathway. And this, had, this overlap between the two pathways had not been shown before. So it shows a, a much more refined uh, mechanism of mTORC1 regulation. And so um, what we did to look at the possible um, roles of RAG C phosphorylation was what we made. Um, phosphomutants, which would mimic the non-phosphorylatable or the phosphorylated state. And when we first looked at um, the individual sites and looked one by one at the, each of these sites, we found that no one site in particular could be responsible for the abrogation of signaling. And it's important to note that all of these sites are outside of the gap domain. So so this is a function that's separate from the GTPase function of, the, of RAG-C. And then um, what we also noticed was that when all three um, phosphorylation mutants were put together, this was when we found the most significant decrease in mTORC1 activation in response to insulin. And um, down, if you look at the RAG-C3E mutant, um, you can see that the 3E mutant was able to rescue full mTORG1 activation. We also looked at um, RAG-C3A in the, in the amino acid signaling pathway and looked at um, mTORG1 substrates, uh, P70S6 kinase, as well as um, S6 kinase, the substrate of S6 kinase um, S6. 
And um, what we found was that, um, interestingly, this phosphorylation event is important for amino acid signaling as well. So there's something very interesting that's going on in that, in that um, mTORC1 activation pathway. Um, we also thought that it was important to knock down the endogenous RAG-C so that we could isolate the effect of RAG-C3A and RAG-C3E. So um, in these experiments, what we did was we knocked down the endogenous RAG-C and RAG-D um, and then replaced it with wild-type RAG-C or RAG-C3A. Um, when we look at the uh, effect of knocking down RAG-C and RAG-D, it does um, disrupt uh, it, insulin the insulin-stimulated activation of mTORC1, which is um, not surprising because it would mean that mTORC1 is not lys local lysosomally localized and not able to be activated by REB. And then when we replaced um, the, knock the knocked down RAG-C or RAG-D with um, wild-type RAG-C or RAG-C3A, we found that the RAG-C3A was not able to rescue um, full mTORC1 activation. And we also saw um, the same, the same um, observation in the, in the amino acid signaling pathway, where um, the wild-type RAG-C was able to fully rescue the mTORC1 activation, but RAG-C3A was not. Um, one of the uh, observations that we noticed in these cells um, that were um, expressing RAG-C3E was that the cells were quite a bit bigger than the other cells. So we started thinking about the autophagy signaling pathway. Now, mTORC1 is, um, serves um, roles in both increasing anabolic pathways and suppressing catabolic pathways. And one of the catabolic pathways that it suppresses is the autophagy pathway. And it does this by phosphorylating um, ULK1 at um, serine 757. So we looked at ULK1 in all of our different phosphomutants and found that um, the 3A mutant, um, that there was uh, less phosphorylation at this site, which would indicate in, um, that mTORC was not able to suppress autophagy in this mutant. However, in the 3E mutant, uh, RAG-C was fully suppressing autophagy like we would expect. We also looked at the... Um, the well-established marker of autophagy, which is the LC32 band, um, which uh, develops as autophagosomal bodies form. And um, what we found was that the wild-type M3E mutants were able to um, suppress autophagy in a serum basal condition. However, um, the, the, 3A, the 3A RAG-C mutant was not able to suppress autophagy. Um, we also looked at this, this, um, this observation under immunofluorescent microscopy. And um, what we did was we used GFP um, LC3 to look at formation of autophagosomal bodies. And um, what we see in the uh, empty vector is that there is a, a quite um, distinct formation of lysosomal bodies. And um, the same uh, observation is seen in those cells expressing RAG-C3A. However, in the cells overexpressing wild-type RAG-C and RAG-C3E, we see a suppression of autophagosomal bodies. The next thing that we um, wanted to tease out was how this um, phosphorylation is um, a actually activating uh, mTORC1 activity. And as I mentioned before, it's important that mTORC1 is localized at the lysosome in order for it to contact REB so that it can be fully um, activated. And so um, in, in these experiments, what we did was we looked at first the empty vector control, the, the scramble shRNA, and found that, yes, we could see mTORC1 localizing at the lysosome. And then when we knocked down uh, RAG-C and RAG-D, there's a very dispersed mTORC1 signal. And then um, when we rescued with um, a wild-type version of RAG-C, the uh, mTORC was still able to localize at the lysosome. However, um, when we, <laughs> when we um, replaced with RAG-C3A, mTORC was also still able to localize at the lysosome. So this um, told us that it's not a uh, mTORC uh, localization defect. 
Um, before I go into the part about mTORC1 complex stability, I just want to bring up some uh, previous data from us and other labs that shows that there is a kind of paradoxical um, event that happens with the sta stability of the Raptor mTOR complex under um, nutrient uh, basal and, um, and serum basal. So under the basal condition, there's a more stable interaction between Raptor and mTOR, and it's thought that this blocks the active site from um, targeting substrates. And then um, when, when um, cells are supplied with amino acids or insulin, um, the Raptor mTOR uh, uh, relationship is, is slightly destabilized, which is thought to make the active site able to recognize substrates. So um, what we did was we tried overexpressing flag RAG-A along with HA RAG-C and um, IPed flag the flag RAG-A and then looked at um, the stability of the mTOR complex. Uh, what we saw was that both the wild type and 3A uh, forms of RAG-C um, formed this very stable mTOR complex, which is a marker of, uh, of mTOR D act not being in its active form. And then the RAG-C3E uh, form was able to uh, destabilize the mTOR raptor relationship. Um, so um, we still uh, accept this model where amino acids are important for localization of, of mTOR and that insulin is important for um, blocking the T blocking TSE2 and, and PRAS40. But we just want to add in this um, phosphorylation of RAG-C, which, which um, coordinates these two pathways in order to get full mTOR activation so that it can um, promote protein synthesis and block autophagy. And um, just to sum, sum everything up, I, I owe a big debt of gratitude to um, Professor David James for welcoming me this past year and to um, Dr. Guang Yang, who has uh, been working with me on this project, and also Sean Humphrey, who did the phosphoproteomic screen, and James Birchfield, who has been helping a lot with the microscopy. So to everyone, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Daniel, for this brilliant talk. Any burning questions? No. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, do you have any idea what is actually phosphorylating your protein? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, when we look at the sequence, it looks like it, it, it could be mTOR, mTOR itself, which is pretty interesting that um, mTOR has been shown to regulate some of its own regulation, which it does in the, in the I think, in the DEPTOR, um, in the DEPTOR relationship, which targets mTOR for, or which targets something for degradation, right? And um, so this could be a, like kind of a cyclical feedback loop, which promotes more mTOR phosphorylation. So we're not sure yet, but it could be. Thanks so much, Daniel. Fantastic.